I warned people that they weren't prepared. I warned them. Some people laughed at it. Are they laughing now? Are they? Welcome, folks, one and all, to Let's Play Ultima 9 Ascension, released in 1999 for the PC. Developed by Origin Systems and published by Electronic Arts, Ultima Ascension is the final game in the mainline single-player Ultima Saga, and the third game in the Armageddon trilogy, tying off all of the loose ends and presenting an ending to the Saga of the Avatar. At least that was the intention. It didn't end up coming to pass. The meddling from Electronic Arts was such with this game that the original plotline that was proposed for Ultima 9 did not come to be, and instead we got this game. A game that people universally think is pretty bad. Very bad, in fact. Far worse than Ultima 8. Do you remember when everybody in my comments said that Ultima 8 was a terrible game? Keep that in mind when I say that people think that Ultima 9 is even worse. But before we go into Ultima 9, I want to go into a brief synopsis of the saga so far, so that we have a vague picture in our minds as to the journey that has led to the final game. Ultima started in 1979, with a Calibeth, Ultima Zero, with Ultima 1 being released in 1981. Ultima 1 has you playing the Stranger, entering into the world of Cesaria, where they must go into dungeons, slay monsters, and discover that there is a time machine that they can use, with the right crystals to power it up, to go far, far back into the past and defeat Mondane, the evil wizard who is threatening Cesaria. Along the way, you get laser guns, you get hover cars with laser blasters, and you get to go into space and become a space ace. It's a mishmash of fantasy and sci-fi that was very typical for the time. Might and Magic is another series that also had a lot of mishmash fantasy and sci-fi. Wizardry too. Now that I'm thinking about it, both of those series ended sadly as well. Might and Magic 9 was released in a very buggy state, and then the company went bust shortly afterwards, and the people that made Wizardry, the mainline Wizardry series that we got over here, they had to sell advertising space at the end of their game just to get enough money to complete the game. Anyway, you defeat Mondane, and then in Ultima 2, Minax, Mondane's lover, gets a bit angry that you killed Mondane, and decides to mess with time so that you don't exist. Fortunately, you are saved from this uh, potential fate, and you have to once again go adventuring. This time you're adventuring on Earth, albeit in different time periods, and also on other planets as well. Once again sailing through the stars in spaceships, and travelling through time to get a sword capable of killing Minax. But even that is not enough, for the third game in the Age of Darkness trilogy is Exodus, where you and a group of people, including elves, dwarfs, and bobbits, yes, bobbits, have to face off against Exodus, the creation of Minax and Mondane. Exodus is a third magic, a third demon, a third machine, and while that does sound very cool, and the pictures of Exodus are also very cool, the third machine part is a tape machine, and you defeat Exodus using punch cards. Not exactly the most epic ending to an epic looking villain, but the consequences of defeating Exodus are extreme. Sasaria is nearly destroyed, the elves, dwarfs, and bobbits are never seen again, outside of Ultima Underworld, where we do see dwarves, but that's a completely different story, and Britannia is formed from what remains, with Lord British, a character that you've aided since Acalabeth, emerging as the ruler of Britannia. A small group of people decide not to join Britannia, and they have their land sort of separated off using magic, and that becomes the Serpent Isles. You, in fact, visit the place that would become the Serpent Isles in Ultima 1. But I'm thinking ahead there. In Ultima 4, which is the start of the Age of Enlightenment trilogy, Lord British sends out a call for heroes to take on the quest of the Avatar, to become the epitome of the eight virtues, which are humility, honour, honesty, spirituality, sacrifice, compassion, valour, and justice, and the three principles, truth, love, and courage, and become the Avatar. The pinnacle of virtue, 
that all will strive to emulate, and protector of Britannia. You appear in Britannia, once again as the stranger, recruit a group of people who would become your stalwart allies in future games, some of which came from Earth like you, some of which are Britannia native, and you succeed. Along the way, you destroy the Skull of Mundane, a terrifyingly powerful artifact. You succeed in balancing the virtues perfectly, being one with the principles, and, for a brief moment, being the epitome of virtue, and become the Avatar. Now, I say the Avatar because canonically there was only ever one Avatar, but there was nothing stopping other people from also going on the quest for the Avatar, and succeeding, and then becoming an Avatar as well. In Ultima 5, somebody is actually trying to become an Avatar, albeit they're going the wrong way about it, but they're certainly trying. And in Ultima 5 Lazarus, a fan remake of Ultima 5, you encounter somebody who is on the quest of the Avatar, and has actually managed to master two of the virtues. Although it's very clear from the plotline revolving around that character, that they're not actually going to succeed. But if other people had managed to succeed, there would have been more than one avatar. You only need to have that epitome of virtue for that moment when you are succeeding on the quest. You don't have to be at maximum virtue all the time. The virtues ebb and flow and grow and shrink as time goes on, and being an avatar is a journey rather than a destination. Unfortunately, nobody else canonically, as I said, managed to become the Avatar, so you are the only Avatar, and henceforth, you're known as the Avatar. Ultima V, Lord Bridges disappears, and Blackthorn takes charge. There are also the strange shadow banes that tend to uh, warp their surroundings with the reverse of the principles, and long story short, you discover that Lord Blackthorn actually is involved in Lord British never coming back, sealing him away in the Stygian Abyss. You manage to free Lord British, and defeat the Shadowbanes, and rather than face trial here, Lord Blackthorn is offered exile. And that compassion is accepted by the remorseful Blackthorn who was corrupted by the Shadowbanes, and wasn't entirely evil. And so, he disappears through a moon gate to destinations unknown. It is widely believed that a character encountered in Ultima 7 Part 2, one of the monks, is Blackthorn. Seeking redemption and living a better life. Ultima 6 finds the Avatar in the midst of a war with the Gargoyles. You need to find out what the war is about and stop the war. Your life is most definitely on the line in this, because at one point, you literally stake your life on ending the conflict. Fortunately, you do manage to end the conflict. And with that, peace is established between the people of Britannia and the Gargoyles, and the Age of Enlightenment, Ultima 4-6, ends. Then, we get to Ultima 7, and the beginning of the Age of Armageddon. You are summoned to Britannia, in quite odd circumstances. In Ultima 6, you are brought through a red moon gate, and in Ultima 7, the moon gate is also very temperamental. But when you get there, things don't seem to be too terrible. At first glance, there is a murder that's just happened, and YOLO is there trying to solve it. YOLO, one of your uh, main core companions, along with Dupre and Shamino, and you start getting involved in sorting out the murder, and you later discover that magic is starting to go haywire, and a group called the Fellowship, led by Batlin, who definitely is not evil, most certainly not evil, Take it from me, I, I'm the most not evil person that you've ever seen. I, I'm just terribly evil. I, I mean, not evil. I, I mean, I am evil. I mean, why am I even here? You're here because you're involved in this in the next game. Oh, oh yes, I am. Do I end up succeeding in my schemes? Um, not quite. What do you mean, not quite? We'll, we'll get to that. Hey, don't interrupt me. I'm trying to do a synopsis here. Do you want to do a synopsis? I could certainly do this game if you like. Well, fine. Go ahead, then. Anyway, I was leading the Fellowship that most certainly was not a thinly veiled attempt at creating a group of worshippers for the Guardian, an entity that goes from world to world, conquering them and adding them to his repertoire of worlds that he commands. Now, I was doing many schemy things, like murdering people who were discovering what we were doing, and 
accumulating black rock, which is what we needed to create a portal way of sorts for the Guardian to enter Britannia. I was also messing around with magic and whatnot, but that cursed avatar was able to discover what I was doing, restore magic and the sanity of the various casters who, being affected by the failing of magic, find the black rock gate and destroy it, even though destroying the black rock gate meant that he couldn't get home anymore, because the moon gates were no longer functioning. He chose saving Britannia over ever returning to Earth. Now, that is a very virtuous thing and quite commendable, but honestly, I'd have taken the opportunity to leave. I mean, there are reasons why invading Earth would be quite difficult for the Guardian. So yes, I ended up having to flee away, the Fellowship was disbanded, and Britannia was saved, but the Avatar was trapped. Shall I carry on with Ultima 7 Part 2? No, 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 I'll carry on with that one. Why not? I'm pretty much there for the whole thing, aren't I? About that. Just just stay there, Batman. And glare at me. In your evil way. I'm not evil! Y yes, yes, sure. So, between Ultima 7 and Ultima 7 Part 2, Ultima Underworld 2 happens, where the Guardian is able to encase the whole of Castle Britannia in a dome of black rock, sealing it off from the rest of Britannia. And the Avatar, alone because his companions stay within the castle, finds a crystal of black rock within the sewers of Britannia and uses that to travel to different worlds that the Guardian has conquered, finding items within those worlds and helping people there in their resistance against the Guardian. He is ultimately able to shatter the uh, black rock dome and get back to the world that had fallen into disarray since their liege had been separated from them. He also managed to find a Black Rock Serpent that proved to be very important in Ultima 7 Part 2, The Serpent Isle, where we find out that Batlin has gone to the Serpent Isle at the behest of the Guardian. And Yolo, Shamino, Dupree come along with the Avatar to go in chase. Long story short, there are bad things going on in the Serpent Isles. There are lightning storms that transport people about and teleport items from one place to another so that the Mage Bane has been replaced with a penguin egg and there are loads of penguins that are really stubbornly guarding a magical sword that's really good against mages that we really could have used when we were facing Batlin. But ultimately, we never get the chance to face Batlin because Batlin goes rogue and sees an opportunity to gain power for himself. And of course, goes for it. And naturally, it goes terribly wrong and Batlin dies. The last words that he shouts being for the Guardian to help him, and then for the Avatar to help him. That's not how I died. You can check the video if you like, Batlin. Go on, go check it. You're right. My betrayal was foolish. I, I should never have betrayed the Guardian's trust. No, you probably shouldn't. But you strove for power above all else, and you saw an opportunity for it. It also released the Banes upon the world, which uh, sort of killed most of the people in the Serpent Isles. And in some cut content, the Avatar would have protected various people that survived the Banes attacks and then defeated the Banes. In actuality in the game, you just go to a castle where the Banes are after they've killed most people, and then you kill them and get them resurrected. But the ultimate problem, and the reason why the lightning storms are going on and everything, is that the two Guardian Serpents, the Order and Chaos Serpents, are in disarray, and they need to be reunited to restore balance to the universe. Somebody needs to sacrifice their life for that, and the Avatar is willing to do so, but to pray, feeling guilty about all the deaths that happened while he was being controlled by a Bane, sacrifices himself instead, and you use to pray's ashes and fuse to pray with the serpents to restore balance. Keep that thing in mind. That thing may become important later. Maybe. And so, with balance restored, the Avatar is in a place between worlds, and the Guardian, seizing an opportunity, snatches him up and banishes him to Pagan, so that he can't interfere while the Guardian takes over Britannia. There is a dream section in Ultima 7 Part 2 where you hear from the from Lord Bridges' dreams that 
Britannia is in serious trouble and is under attack, and why isn't the Avatar here? Why can't the Avatar be here? It's never truly determined if that is actually a dream of Lord British, or just a uh, thing to play with the Avatar's mind, but either way, Ultimate 8 Pagan has the Avatar in Pagan trying to escape, which is a lot easier said than done as Pagan is ruled over by the Titans, who have absolute control of everything. And the only way for the Avatar to escape is to gain the power of the Titans, and surpass them. This involves undertaking training with the various people who serve the Titans. First the Necromancers, and then the Healers, and finally the Sorcerers summoning demons, dealing with the undead, and doing things that many people would not on the outset think are virtuous, but ultimately, the Avatar not only manages to subjugate the Titans and free Pagan from their influence, so that they can have a future without being under their thumb, but also manages to become the Titan of Magic, a supremely powerful being. With this power, he is able to leave Pagan, and arrives in Britannia to see that he is too late, that Britannia is already under the Guardian's thumb. The sky is red, there is a monolith of the Guardian's face, and his laughter. Ultimate 8 ends, setting the scene for an epic final battle where the Avatar and people that would help him are in an all-out conflict with the Guardian. It's a really great finish, and it gets you excited for what's to come. People who play through the entire series and then heard that there was Ultima 9, the final game, that it was going to be in full 3D, that there was going to be a fully voice-acted story for them to go through, would be really excited. They would rush out, they would grab the game, they would want to see this climactic final confrontation. And then they got Ultima 9. Suffice to say, people were disappointed. Suffice to say, the game was financially unsuccessful. People thought the game was buggy, the game was unfinished, that there were lots of things that were missing. Loads of things that were done wrong, lots of uh, mistakes when it came to lore, and it was heralded as a really, really sad end to a fantastic series of games. Ultima 10 never came out, Ultima Online continued, but nowadays, barely anyone, when someone mentions the Avatar, thinks of the Ultima series. There was a mobile game that briefly existed, there was Shroud of the Avatar, a game made under the direction of Richard Garriott, and there is Underworld Ascension, the spiritual successor to Ultima Underworld 1 and 2. But we're not talking about them, we are looking at the final game in the Ultima series, Ultima 9. So without further ado, let us dive in to the final adventure of the Avatar. Keep that ending of Ultima 8 in mind. Remember the grim reality of Britannia under the rule of the Guardian. Think about what is to come in the Avatar's final quest. He's ready, sword drawn, spells prepared to fight for Britannia's future. So how does the game begin? Watch on and find out. For when we come back, the beginning of Ultima 9 where we're surely going to hit the ground running right away, protecting Britannia. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.